Greetings, John Tiller Software, Panzer Campaigns players, to my playthrough of Scenario 0904-01A, Antwerp, Taurus Pursuant. The Taurus Pursuant refers to the British 11th Armoured Division that features in this scenario. If you would like to read the comprehensive briefing in this scenario, press pause now. There is a comprehensive list of default options for this scenario, so I thought it would be a worthwhile exercising discussing these. The first is the Alternative Assault Resolution. This affects units which have a hard attack range of zero. When the optional Alternative Assault Rule is in effect, these values are included in the assault whether as being the defender or the attacker. Artillery setup takes into account that uh, indirect fire units have to spend time setting up before firing, so there is a delay. The artillery setup in this scenario is 90%, so mobile artillery can move, stop and fire in the same turn if they have enough movement points. Recon spotting. Recon units can spend one third of their movement allowance in an attempt to spot units within their visibility range. So use S to check your visibility range. In short, the virtual supply trucks option calculates a local supply value for each hex at the beginning of each turn. And then supply will depend on the movement cost by motorised transport from a supply source to the location of each unit. So back to our list. Optional surrender deals with broken units that have been assaulted and cannot retreat. In this case they are eliminated. Low visibility air effects ties air availability to the visibility factor. It is described as air limitation in the parameters data. The quality fatigue modifier modifies the accumulation of fatigue by a unit according to its quality factor. Optional amphibious rules allows an amphibious unit to move through a single water hex at its full movement cost. With counter battery fire option selected, there is a probability that unit conducting indirect fire will be spotted by the enemy, even when there is no clear line of sight to the firing unit. As the night fatigue option suggests, units that are active during night turns will accumulate fatigue. Program weather is self-explanatory and limited air recon. So enemy units spotted using air recon cannot be targeted for air or artillery attacks unless the enemy unit is also seen by a friendly ground unit. As the option suggests, delayed disruption reporting delays reporting of disrupted enemy units for one turn. Extended patrolling. When this rule is selected, patrolling units will cancel deception effects of both partisans and deployed deception units. In the strength dialogue you can in fact see that we have the 11th Armoured Division as mentioned earlier. So we enter the scenario on the dawn turn, 0600 hours, 4th of September 1944. 
So we have some reinforcements and in fact we do not have any units on the map at this stage. So in the north of the map we have Antwerp and in the south of the map we have the British supply source and the origin of where the Allied units will appear. The majority of the terrain is flat, uh, numerous streams and a fairly extensive road and rail network unlike many of the maps on the Eastern Front. So to start the game we will go to Arrived Units Place all and that's it. We're there. Just have a quick look at the weather. Visibility 2Ks, normal conditions and soft uh, conditions underfoot. So that is all we get to do on the first turn, quite straightforward. We do get this uh, irregular unit turned up and note that these are irregulars, not partisans. It is a different category of unit. So we'll discuss that in a moment but we'll see what happens in turn one. The first turn has happened. Our report says the visibility is worsening, more reinforcements have arrived. Okay, fair enough. So let's have a look at our arrived units. Looks like they're the initial units of the 11th Armoured Division. So place all. So in the south, our initial units of the 11th Armoury Division have arrived. And also further north we've had more irregular units. So let's have a look at irregular units and see what they can tell us. <coughs> Note that these units have deception. unlike some of the other ones. Well, this one's a deception as well and this one isn't for instance. There are quite a few irregular units in this scenario so we should get to know their capabilities. They are similar to partisan units except they tend to be larger, uh, more organized and have higher combat values. They can also spot for indirect fire or airstrikes and they do not utilize deception effects except when they're trained to do so. So that's something to watch out for and hence why we have some of the units with the deception capability. Uh, the scenario designer can give them this. Sometimes you'll find recon units have this capability, commando units, etc and that will depend on the scenario designer's intent. So deception units only exist in a few games depending on the historical situation and the Battle of the Bulge is one of those uh, situations that readily comes to mind and they represent units trying to operate behind enemy lines and to cause disruption of movement and activities of the enemy and as discussed if you right click on the unit picture you'll see the designation Deception. In this scenario the irregular units have two modes that is either as an irregular unit in its standard mode or as a deception unit. So to put it into deception mode can occur on any turn but they can only be redeployed on the first turn on or immediately after midnight. 
the deception capable unit must not have moved or otherwise used movement points in the current turn. The deception capable unit can be deployed within three times the deception range for that side. So in this case the deception range for allied units is three so it can be deployed up to nine hexes from its original location. To put a unit into deception mode first identify the unit and I find identifying the unit by the hex location which is found in the lower right hand side of the screen is very helpful as you will soon see. Next identify the hex you wish to have the unit in deception mode. Click this hex to make it the hotspot. So first identify the unit that has deception capability. Then note the lower right hand side of the screen for the hex identification which in this case is 922. Then identify where you would like to place the unit in deception mode. So we'll select this township here. It's an obvious uh, junction for transport. So this is a good place to disrupt any German movement. And it's within nine hexes. Units, deception units, identify the unit, Hex 922 is quite, knowing that's quite useful. Then we hit deploy. A question mark then appears saying that that unit now is in deception mode in this hex. So to restate the impact of deception units. So enemy units moving in travel mode are subject to possible disruption and loss of remaining movement points. Secondly, enemy engineer units attempting to blow bridges or otherwise cause damage are subject to possible failure of this action. So if you find yourself uh, playing a scenario with units that have deception capability, uh, make sure you check the manual. I haven't covered all the details, but uh, the majority. So uh, enjoy the uh, challenge of placing these units in your scenario. So let's place the remaining uh, units. Also now we have a unknown unit up here, an unknown German unit. <clears throat> so our deception units are in hex 10, 12. So now to the 11th Armoured Division units. From our starting position down here in the southwest, we could either go and do a try and attack up the thin side, which means we'd have to go all the way up to this ford here and perhaps come back down to this 800 pointer. Up the guts might be a little bit dicey given we have all these germ units along here. Closer to home or we can go the the fat side with our armoured units and try and 
I would suggest go for this 800, 400 and 800 unit uh, up here at the top. The high value units or victory locations. Closer to home we have these damaged canals. Two of them in fact. A medium bridge and a heavy bridge. So we'd have to chance our arm at building a bridge and the bridge probability is only 30%. So a little less than one in three chance of building a bridge. The obvious uh, alternate at this stage is to run our units down here to this town and then go north from there. If you look closely at the map though, you'll find there is actually a steel bridge just here. And in fact we can get there by going around this way. So that is what we're going to do for the first phase of our deployment. And that's it. Put turn two. Deployed the irregular units in deception mode and our vanguard of the 11th Armored Division. Interesting, this guy's turned up as a question mark, or maybe this is a dust situation. Wouldn't think there'd be much dust in soft conditions in Denmark, though. Or Belgium, at least. What do you know? Reinforcements have arrived. Oh, the infantry unit's done a runner. So, I think what the first thing we'll do is have a look at our irregular units and figure out where to deploy them. So, two units in 1411. Yeah, our mystery unit has disappeared. Fourteen, eleven. Maybe we can put one up here. Now we remember 
this guy's down here so with our infantry unit okay excellent so we'll stick our infantry in deployed mode oops So I'm hoping to build a bridge onto this freeway because we have virtual supply trucks uh, if we can get the trucks moving around this way uh, rather than around the dirt road or the secondary road here that'll marginally be better for our supply I don't intend to run my armoured units against anti-tank guns so I think we'll just harass the infantry unit Right, that one's a wrecky unit. Okay, he doesn't have anything left. Oh, can't get over that stream. Right, and so ends our 4 September 1944 turn, or turn 3. Okay, with our infantry we'll go all out against these guns. Generally you're trying to attack um, any tank guns with infantry. So, ideal situation. Excellent. Oh, there we go. So down and left. Okay. So 
So at this stage we've got this infantry unit surrounded, so he can't get out of there, so he is doomed. It's always the question of do you continue advancing or do you stay behind and mop up? So at this point with our small force, I'll do the latter and we'll see what happens. Okay, moving up the map. All, all quiet up there. So for this chap here, it was disrupted. So I wonder if I get him out there whether he becomes undisrupted. Okay, so that's it for turn four. Reinforcements have arrived. Ah, there we go. Alright, so our bridge wasn't built. First of all, I'll arrive units. Okay, he's in twenty ten. Right, said Fred. Right, so we should be able to finish him off next turn. I won't fire him. And once again, I think that is that. Oh, we have him here. Oh, he's a normal unit, okay. So where do we want to go? Here can go. Right, that's that turn. Turn 5 of 19, so...
reinforcements have arrived. Still our bridge wasn't built. Hmm, two unsatisfactory results there. So... So, not 10 guns. Uh, right.
turn seven, so we're romping along. Ah, so our anti aircraft gun friends seem to have packed up. So at this stage we seem to be in reasonably good shape. We've got most of our units across the uh, river. And our options are fairly open at this stage whether we go around to the right or try and find a hole in this part of the line. <laughs> 